Were you trained more as a sculptor, or? Um, I started out at a young age, you know, small grade school, painting, drawing, right. um, like most kids, and, um, and and did that. And then in uh, undergrad, I, I took uh, art as a minor. The school that I went to, Belmont University, didn't. I, when I was there, they started their art program, so oh. you could only get a minor by the time I uh, graduated. Uh -huh. So uh, I have you know a minor in art from there, um, and then. I worked in uh, sales and marketing, the record industry, and moved out to California and worked for a running company in sales and marketing, worked for the phone company out there. So a lot of corporate experience. And then later in life, you know, you saw my resume. I just received my uh, grad degree a couple of years ago. Yeah, so. but I had no idea how old you were. Yeah, yeah, I'm old. I'm an old man. <laughs> so, but, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I decided, uh, you know, at that point, you know, I'm, I'm doing art on the side, but I want to do it for a living. You know, uh -huh. I enjoy teaching. I was doing workshops and things like mm -hmm. that um, for the job and decided, well, I want to go back to school and, you know, and get my degree and do, do this full time. So, um, made that choice, ended up at Texas Tech. Um, Are you from Texas? I'm, I was raised in New Mexico, I was born in Missouri, raised in, you know, part of Texas and then in New Mexico. And the town I'm from, Clovis, New Mexico, from second grade on, um, it's only eight miles mm -hmm. from Texas, so, you know, you may as well be in Texas. And uh, the, and so Lubbock, Texas is only 100 miles from where I grew up. And, oh, I see. Uh, right, right, So right. I, I looked at about five different schools, traveled around and checked out the schools and met with faculty members, et cetera, and decided on Texas Tech for a lot of reasons. And, and one was my father was a failing health. He actually, that was one of the other things. This summer he passed away, the 1st of August. So um, it was dealing with that as well this we summer. We were just so. in Lubbock and saw five yeah. artists there. Yeah, so there yeah. Some, definitely some interesting artists there. Oh, there's a, you know, there's a lot of work. Yeah. happening in Lubbock, yeah. which uh, you know, I'm excited about. And, I, and when I went there for grad school, of course, I was looking at the school primarily, hadn't been in that town in a long time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I was pleasantly surprised how, how the city was opening up to the art and, mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So, and some of the people you saw are friends of mine, some people I studied yeah. with at right. Tech. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so it was good. I was glad you all got to meet them and see, see what's happening in the Lubbock scene. How did you get started with uh, the chair pieces? The chair pieces, I was in grad school and um, about 200 of the art chairs, you know, just the plastic bucket chairs were in the hallway outside of my studio, uh -huh. stacked up. I they were going to the surplus department to be auctioned off. Most of them were broke and, you know, covered with paint, gum, you know, the whole nine yards. And so I asked the director of the School of Art, you know, can I use these? And uh, she said, well, yeah, sure. You know, I said, I think I can do something with them. And so the way that I work is I collect these objects, these items. Mainly I work with, I try to work with things that interact with our human space, you know, get into our, our personal space. And right. some things we touch, you know, and leave some detritus behind on. So. Um, the chair sat in my studio for about six months, and that's the way I work a lot of times. Like the matches, I found them at an auction, a big box of them, 5,000 of them. And so they sit there, and I stare at them for a while, and then I start maneuvering them around like you do with, you know, Lincoln Logs or Legos or something <laughs> of that nature, you know, and um, see what I can do with them on a formal basis. And then and I think the conceptual side starts to come in gradually. Um, and that's the way it was with the chairs. I, I originally took them, and I'll, I'll show you when we look at the images. I uh, took them in a space that we had there at Tech, an alternative space. I made three or four pieces. I thought, oh, I'm done with it. This is great. I'll get a grade, you know, <laughs> and then I'll send them to Surplus. They'll auction them off. And everybody really liked the pieces, and so they said, push it. So um, I started pushing, and, you know, I've been working with them ever since. So I have about 3,000 chairs now, and they're all, you know, from, you know, preschool all the way up to adult size chairs, so, right. so I've, done, I've done quite a few pieces with those. And then, you know, the rubbings uh, came. This is a came, folding chair, though, right? Or, no, this is, this is, and I have this exact chair in the room where oh, we'll okay. go. It's a, it's a small preschool chair. Oh, and okay. so, the way that I got to this, which is, um, you know, you know how artists are, sometimes it takes you two or three years to finally dawn something dawns on you, oh my gosh, I should do this, that's the best way to do it. I kept trying, I was doing drawings of the, the pieces and then 
I was, uh, you know, doing, trying to do drawings before pieces. I don't typically try to pre-plan. I take the group of chairs or the matchbooks or wherever to the space and then, and then come up with the work on site, typically. Um, but I was trying to figure out how can I do drawings or paintings or something of these, something beyond photographs. And so I, I tried what, um, you know, Armand used to do was, you know, you'd take a piece and ink it up and then roll it around on paper, you know, and come up with these wonderful markings. And so I tried that and it looked like crap, you know, <laughs> it's a chair, you know, rolling around on a piece of paper. So uh, it finally dawned on me, wrap the chair in the paper, you know, drape the paper over the chair. And so I tried different types of mediums um, and I finally came up with powdered graphite. So we're basically talking about tissue paper. I tried canvas and all sorts of things. It's, you know, delicate tissue paper draped over the chairs and then I, uh, you know, wear the respirator in the whole nine yards and, and, and do a rubbing, you know, so it's a frottage rubbing. And, um, and I, what I really enjoy about them is that you know, the chair is stagnant, it's solid, um, you know, of course you have a human figure, you can't get away from the figure with a chair, but we all leave, you know, something behind when we sit in a chair, you know, especially the chairs that I use from schools. Uh, so, you know, they have some type of, you know, detritus or epithelials or, you know, or just feeling or whatever. So what interests me about them is, you know, there's all these students who have sat in these same chairs year after year, taught the same things the same way, you know, over and over and over, and, but yet, you know, the system doesn't change, the chair doesn't change, you know, but the students are all different, they all learn in different ways, and so, um, you know, where are all these people now, you know, that sat in that one chair, this mass-produced chair, and thousands of people sat in that one chair, so, for me, these are the, the essence, the ghost image, you know, the, what's left behind. Um, and I, I enjoy it because they're they're light. They waft, you know, in the breeze. They move. They make noise. They're real lightweight. They're not necessarily archival, you know. I mean, I'll spray some of them, but for the most part, they're eventually going to wither away. Whereas, you know, the chair is solid. You know, it's a it's a single form that's stagnant. So you kind of have that you know, 